Welcome to the road to 1 million US dollars. Let's get right into the Bitcoin chart for today. As you can see over the last couple of days, we had this rising wedge pattern, which I did call out would be more likely to break to the downside. And in fact, we did actually get the break to the downside as well. Then losing support in this level, which was from about 66,000 all the way down to 65,000 US dollars for the price of Bitcoin. And now once we have broken below it, we reached as low as about 62.8K when my price target was roughly 62K. So now what can we expect in the short term here for Bitcoin? On the one hour time frame, you can see we have this bullish divergence playing out because we have a higher high in the RSI momentum indicator and we have a lower high in the price of Bitcoin. And typically what you can expect from these bullish divergences is simply some choppy sideways price action or in fact some bullish price action. But considering that this is a bullish divergence on the one hour time frame, I think it is unlikely that this will be a very long lasting move to the upside. It is more likely as of right now, just based on the data I can see right now, it is more likely to just create a little bit of a bullish move, for example, into this pocket of resistance or simply trade sideways in order to maybe extend the bullish divergence. So it also starts showing up on, for example, the four hour or the daily time frame, And in that case, it could start creating the potential for a larger move to the upside but we just have to continue to take it one day at a time and not get ahead of ourselves. So continuing to take a look at the RSI momentum indicator here, you can see that on the one hour time frame, we actually reach pretty deep into oversold territories. Typically, whenever the RSI reaches oversold territories, there is limited room to the downside for the price of Bitcoin. So what first needs to happen before we can have another big move to the downside is that the RSI needs to reset a little bit. And the way it does that is simply by the price trading sideways or the price getting a little bit of bullish momentum. And in that case, the RSI will move up more quickly. So that is just something to keep in mind if you are currently in a short position. We are seeing this bullish divergence on the one hour time frame. So like I said, we could see some bullish price action or some choppy sideways price action. But just in case there's, for example, some really bearish news and we get a larger pullback to the downside, well, the next big level of support that you need to keep an eye on is this level from about 62,000 all the way down to 60,000 US dollars. One last thing to note about this bullish divergence is that yes, on the one hour time frame, we actually reached into oversold territory and we have this bullish divergence on the one hour time frame. However, on the four hour time frame, we actually have not reached into oversold territories just yet. And in fact, there's also not a bullish divergence on the four hour time frame yet. So this is something to keep in mind, in my opinion. There might still be a little bit of room to the downside left because there is still room for the RSI to move to the downside as currently it is at 40 and we aren't in oversold territories until it reaches a level below 30. Moving on to the Bitcoin ETF flow table for today. As you can see yesterday, we got a net outflow of about $120 million. And in fact, all of the selling pressure came from the Grayscale Bitcoin ETF with all of the other ETFs combined only buying about $10 million worth of Bitcoin. So this was a very small day in terms of inflows. And actually yesterday, I went pretty deep in my opinion on the Bitcoin ETFs and what I think will be happening over the next couple months. So if you are interested in that type of deeper analysis into the Bitcoin ETFs, I do recommend you check out yesterday's video. It starts at about three minutes where I start talking about the Bitcoin ETFs here. And the video title is Bitcoin Warning, It's a Trap. Now moving on to the one week Bitcoin liquidation heat map. As you can see, most of the liquidity right now is to the upside. We have about $1 billion worth of liquidity at about 67.3K. So this is definitely something to keep in mind because as you know, if you watch my videos regularly, typically the Bitcoin price gets attracted to where there is most liquidity on this chart. And as of right now, in the short term, it is definitely to the upside at 67.3K. However, there's also about half a billion dollars worth of liquidity sitting below 62.5K. And actually zooming out to the one month Bitcoin liquidation heat map, we see a similar story with by far most of the liquidity sitting to the upside. The first big pocket, like I said, being at about 67.3K. But then even above that, we have about $1.8 billion at 71.8K. 
and $1.9 billion at 73.2K. So these are major levels of liquidity that in my opinion will get taken out at some point. And of course, I can't predict when exactly Bitcoin is going to reach these price levels. However, in my opinion, since we are in a bull market, I do think it is more likely that at some point we are going to take out these big levels of liquidity. However, this is, of course, not financial advice. I'm simply telling you what I see in the data and the charts and you can do with that information what you like. Now, moving on to Ethereum on the daily time frame. As you can see, we got rejected from the 0.786 Fibonacci level. And in fact, we traded to the downside, losing the 0.618 Fibonacci level and quickly moved all the way to the downside to the 0.5 Fibonacci level, where we actually found some support and started trading to the upside. However, zooming in on the four hour time frame, you can see that recently we had this ascending triangle pattern, which broke out to the upside right here. And it got very close to reaching this price target right here. But of course, at that point, we saw Bitcoin break out to the downside from this rising wedge pattern. So it canceled out the move for Ethereum. So we traded back to the downside and have now officially invalidated the pattern because we got a four hour candle close below the point of the breakout. So in my opinion, we can now cross off this price target and we have to look for new patterns in the charts and I will try to do that in the next video. So if you are interested in staying up to date with the crypto markets, then do make sure to subscribe to my channel with notifications on so you get notified whenever I post a new video. So now looking at the short term support and resistance levels, first of all, Ethereum is right now testing this level of resistance from about 3150 all the way up to 3250. And in the case that it somehow breaks through this level of resistance before I post my next video, the next level of resistance above that is the 0.618 Fibonacci level at about 3330. However, in the case that it gets rejected from this level of resistance, well, the next level of support is below that from about $3,000 all the way down to 2850. So those are the levels you need to keep in mind for Ethereum in the short term. Now taking a look at Solana on the daily time frame, as you can see, we got rejected from the 0.786 Fibonacci level and then quickly traded to the downside all the way through the 0.618 Fibonacci level. And that's when we eventually found some support at the 0.5 Fibonacci level for Solana and are now kind of ranging in between these two Fib levels. So now let's take a look at the short term support and resistance levels to know what we can expect in the short term here. The first thing to note here is that you can see we lost this upward sloping trend line for Solana. And as soon as we broke to the downside, we actually got a decent pullback of about 10%. However, just as expected, we fell right into this big level of support, which is sitting from about $150 all the way down to $140. And it looks like right now we are just finding a little bit of support in the short term. Now, the next level of support you need to look out for in the short term is this downward sloping trend line right here, because I do think it is possible that we actually get a bit of a bounce from this trend line. But in the case that we do trade below it, the next big level of support below the trend line right now is from about $133 all the way down to $125 for the price of Solana. And in the case that we actually get a bounce from this level of support or from this trend line, there will be a bit of resistance right here at about $160. The next big level of resistance will be from about $166 all the way up to $171 for the price of Solana. Now, if you are interested in joining a crypto community where you can simply talk about crypto with other people or ask questions, then I do recommend you join my community for free with the first link in the description of this video. This is what it will look like right here. And you just click on this link to Discord. It's completely free and you can leave at any time. And if you are interested in following a free trading course, then I recommend you subscribe to my Patreon for free and you will get access to it as soon as I launch the course, probably next week. So that's about it for today's market update. Thank you very much for watching once again, and I will see you tomorrow in the next one.